Question 18 from the Section 1 of the 2018 Higher Physics Examination. And we have a circuit set up as shown. Identify the components in the circuit. We have a battery of 12 volts connected in series with a resistor. And then that's connected to a capacitor, which is the value of 220 microfarads. The battery has got a value of 12 volts. When the capacitor is fully charged, the energy stored in the capacitor is... Well, first things first, when the energy is stored, when, when the capacitor is fully charged, it's going to have the full potential difference across of 12 volts. So all the characters in capacitors we know are the following. We have got the capacitance itself, C. We have got Q, the charge on the capacitance. We have got the voltage of the capacitance. And we've also got to look at the energy associated with the capacitance. Now, we have the following in our information we have got the capacitance which we know is going to be 220 microfarads so that's that one done we don't know the charge we do know the full voltage across it the voltage across it is going to be 12 volts and we've been asked to find what is the energy across that capacitor energy stored in that capacitor so we're looking for an equation with capacitance voltage energy take a look at your data sheets and you'll find all the energy equations associated with capacitance down at the very bottom. We're looking for one with energy, with uh, voltage and with capacitance. And it's got to be E equals a half Z phi squared. So the one we're going to use is energy E is going to equal to one half of the capacitance times the voltage squared. So we just put the numbers in. One half times the capacitance, 220. It's microfarads, so it's got to go times 10 to the minus 6, multiplied by the voltage squared. So you have to multiply by the voltage squared. So don't forget to multiply that 12 by 12 to give you the answer for that. So do that in your calculator, and you get an answer 1.6 times 10 to the minus 2 joules. And that's the energy stored in the capacitor. And that will be answer 18D. Question 19 from section 1 of the 2018 Higher Physics Examination. And we have a circuit which is shown is used to charge and then discharge a capacitor which is given the title C. And the information is fed into an oscilloscope or via a laptop where you can see the graphs. Now you're given a whole choice of graphs here and you're asked to find which pair of graphs shows how the potential difference across the capacitor varies with time during charging and discharging. Now when the switch is put into this position here then the capacitor it will begin to charge up so electricity will flow around the capacitor in that form like that electrons, electrons will leave the battery and build up on the capacitor but when you actually switch to this position here then the capacitor will discharge and the uh, electricity will flow all the way around that way of the circuit so we're going to have a build up of voltage and then we're going to have a decrease of voltage and it looks like it's going to be this graph here the voltage increasing uh, during charging and then decreasing uh, exponentially as they call it in discharging now it's very hard for me to explain that without actually showing you the experiment so what I've included here is a little movie and here's a little movie here and you can see the graph which we obtain when we build the circuit as shown above and feed it into a laptop which gives us the data of the voltage across the capacitor when it's charging and discharging so have a look at the little a movie now and you can see why the answer is E. Question 20 of section 1 of the higher physics exam of 2018. And it's a practical one. A student carries out an experiment to determine the specific heat capacity, C, of a solid. The relationship used to calculate C is given there. C equals E, the energy divided by M, the mass, times the change in temperature. And the recorded measurements and their percentage uncertainties are shown. So the energy supplied was 5,000 joules 
and our uncertainty there was plus or minus 1%. The mass of the solid heated up was 0 0.20 kilograms and the uncertainty was 2%. The change in the temperature delta T was yielded 4.5 degrees Celsius and the percentage uncertainty was 5%. Now, a good estimate of the percentage uncertainty in the calculated value of C is, and we're given the usual five uh, answers. Now, when we do any experiment, to find the overall percentage uncertainty of an experimental result, we have to take the largest percentage uncertainty calculated for the measurements. So we look down all our measurements, we can see that the change in the temperature has given us an uncertainty of plus or minus 5%. So that's the one that we have to run with. So our final answer for the specific heat capacity of this particular solid will be a value plus or minus 5%. So the good estimate will be that one there. 5%. The 8% is to throw you off. You just think you've got to add up all the percentages. No. To find overall percentage uncertainty of an experimental result, you take the largest percentage uncertainty calculated for the measurements.